good morning everyone so i am welcome you all of you for the first uh, video lesson of our subject determinate strict analysis so last time we have completed our uh, like a uh, module of a uh, energy method to determine the slope and deflection i hope all of you have the clear idea about the various method for the determination of a deflection and a slope by using unit load and a caustic gyanus method so now we will further move ahead to our new chapter which is cable and arches so all of you might have heard about the cable state bridges suspension bridges or arch bridges so all that structure which is having either arches or a cable as its component we have to analyze it okay so analysis of a cables and arches is basically what we are going to do in this particular chapter so now you all have heard about the suspension bridges so what is the suspension bridges and what is the arch bridges basically these two kind of bridges is being used whenever there is a the span of the bridge is too long or you can say there is a one busy waterway in which we cannot construct too many piers okay in our busy waterway what will be uh, <coughs> there will be large amount of movement of ships so in order to provide them freedom and to provide the safety we cannot construct too many number of piers in the river or you can say any water body so during such a condition what we have to do we have to adopt or we can we have to go for suspension or cable set or a arch bridges in which there will be a less number of or generally there are a very less amount of uh, piers or you can say pylons are being constructed and we are having very larger span we can achieve very large span of uh, more than 1 or 1 and a half kilometer span uh, for that kind of span also we can we have to just construct two or three supports okay so this is one of the advantage of a uh, cables uh, or a suspension bridges so just see we will discuss general theory regarding cable and arches and from our next uh, 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 next session we will uh, go for examples <coughs> so cables cables are uh, you can say cable is a flexible component okay of a structure so if you apply the load on a cable due to its flexibility it will or you can say it can get deformed and due to that deformation or you to you can say due to that displacement there will be no bending moment generated at any point of cable okay so this is one of the characteristic of a suspension bridges or you can say cables okay so this is you are seeing a one of the figure of a suspension bridges see this is our main cable this is our main cable this our this is our two main pylon or you can say towers this two is pylon or towers this is our main cable which is laid along the length of the bridge and finally it is attached to a strong ground foundation the one of the thing one of the main thing which you have to consider that whenever we are uh, whenever we are uh, embedding okay we have to embed this cable this suspension cable to a some strong foundation to a some strong foundation because if you see that if this portion okay what will happen on our main cable the whatever load of this roadway as well as the vehicular movement load is going to be distributed on the main cable 
by these hangers or you can say suspenders okay so all the vehicular load all the load all the vehicular load as well as all the load of this structure is going to be distributed on a main cable by a suspended or a hanger so what will happen as the load is distributed on this cable these two these two pylon or you can say tower will try to move will try to move in this direction in this direction okay or you can say inside or you can say inside so we have to extend this cable and we have to embed it to a strong foundation which will keep them into the position which will keep them into the position now apart from this the cables are utilized in a various other structures to transmit the load or to support the other member such as the suspension roof bridges trolley wheels also uh uh many time you have you you could have seen that on a terrace of a building uh, there are some wifi towers okay and that wifi towers are held in a position by a number of cables okay if you haven't seen that uh, uh, next time if you see such kind of towers you will find out that that tower is held in a position by number of cables and all that cables are attached to the either columns or a slab of a terrace so the deformation shape the deformation shape of the cable will differ based upon a loading condition if i tell you that uh, suppose that these hangers or suspenders are closely spaced suppose that the suspender and uh, or you can say hangers are closely spaced then whatever the load of this roadway which is distributed on this cable main cable can be considered as a uniform distributed load on the other hand suppose that if the distance between the two consecutive suspenders or a hangers is large then each load will be considered as a point load also it will affect the deformation shape of the suspenders or oh, sorry deformation shape of our of our main cable okay if it is a udl or you can say suspender are placed co closely then it will gain this kind of shape parabolic shape and if it is the suspenders are placed at larger distance then you will have one individual segment okay it will be not in a parabolic form so now i'm going to show you the one figure uh, which will show you how the cables are made of suspension bridges see this figure what you are seeing that there is a one main cable one large main cable and this large cable is composed of a number of small cables let me zoom you uh, let me zoom in so you will have a clear idea what i am trying to say see this main cable is composed of number of small cables and all these small cables are arranged in a specific manner so that it forms a one large cable and this each an individual cable you can see 
there are number of small cables or you can say tandems these small cables or a tandems are laid one by one and one after another and grouped together in a circular manner let me show you another picture you will get a clear idea okay uh, see here see this picture okay what you are seeing that if you look at this picture what they they are doing is that they are laying these small cables or you can say tandems one by one and after the all the small tandems or small cables is laid they are grouping them they are grouping them see this large element this element will group each and individual cable see this is one of the photograph of a japan's akashi bridge you can see so this is one of the portion of the cable it is being kept near to the side of the bridge so you can see the diameter of the cable which is around one and a half meter you can see this person is standing beside the cable you can see that the size is around one and a half meter now while analyzing the cable while analyzing the cable while doing the analysis of the uh, cable we are neglecting the self weight of the uh, cable itself okay also as i told you earlier that uh, cable is a flexible material so there will be no bending moment at any section of a cable also uh, while deriving the necessary relationship between a force in cable and its slope the assumptions made are that the cable is a perfectly flexible and inextensible okay due to the flexibility there will be no resistance to shear or a bending and then for the force acting in a cable is always going to be uh, tangent to the cable at the points along it length uh, as we as i told you that uh, we are assuming that the cable is being inextensible so before and after the loading the cable is going to maintain its length and its geometry and the geometry of the cable remain fixed and the cable or a segment of cable is going to be treated as a rigid body so this was the basic uh, discussion regarding a uh, cable now we will discuss about arches so our next topic is arches so the basic difference between a uh, arches and a uh, cable is that in a uh, arches the our cable is going to remain in a uh, tension while in a uh, arches the arch is going to be remain in a compression so this is a basic difference between a uh, arches and cables you can consider arch as a inverted cable also okay now 
what will happen here if you see the figure of arch uh, in cable what we have seen <coughs> the load of a the load of a roadway is uh, transferred by a suspender to the main cable in arches what is happening the load of this roadway is directly going to applied on this arch and this arch will transfer the load to the abutments to the abutments which is situated on either end okay now as the load is being transferred to the abutments at abutment there will be horizontal reaction also there will be horizontal reaction also at our abutment or you can say the place at which we have at uh, arch meet with our foundation so this is a basic definition of arch the arches are uh, structures composed of a curvilinear members resting on a supports also arch are also used for a large span same way as we have discussed earlier in airplane hangars long span bridges as i have told you that the whatever load coming on the arches of the roadway as well as vehicle and movement it is going to be transferred to the abutment and at abutment we are going to have some horizontal thrust at support vertical reaction as well as even though there is a no horizontal load still we will get our horizontal thrust so this is one of the important thing which you have to keep in mind even though we are not going to have horizontal load still we are going to have horizontal reaction because due to the geometry of a arch because the geometry of a arch the horizontal reaction or you can say horizontal stress is going to be always there at the support the bending moment is uh, relatively lesser to the our normal beam in arch so uh, we won't consider that much the bending moment and shear force effect also we can reduce the effect of a shear force and the bending moment at any section of a arch by changing its geometry now based upon uh, its geometry the arches are being classified as a semicircular segmental or a pointed and based upon a number of hinges internal hinges the arch can be classified as a two hinge arch three hinge arch or a fixed arch you can see in figure see this figure two hinge arch there are, there are two hinges at the support three hinge arch there are two hinges at support and one at a midpoint and fixed arch there is a no hinge provided throughout the arch as well as on support so these are the basic uh, types of arches and each arch have their own uh, advantages disadvantages uh, if we talk about the three hinge arch uh, the three hinge arch is uh, statically determinant while two hinge arch is not statically determinant okay so 
for a longer span as can be used also we can reduce the bending moment by changing the geometry means changing the uh, geometry of the arches as i told you earlier also that uh, we can consider the arch as a inverted cable uh, which only receive the compression which only receive or you can say mainly receive the compression and small amount of uh, bending moment mcl it has to resist now if the arch is parabolic shape now consider if the arch is of a parabolic shape and it if it is loaded uh, with uh, uniformly distributed load vertical load it will have compressive force throughout its entire length so we have to design only to resist the compressive force or you can say the only compressive forces will be resisted by arch and due to its shape and geometry there will be no bending moment or shear force occur in the arch so now the last point of this uh, section uh, as i have told you earlier also that three hinge arch is uh, geometrically stable and statically determined structure while the two hinge and uh, fixed arch are not statically determined so for today session uh, only this much uh, portion uh, will be covered and from next session we will start uh, uh, examples and uh, some uh, theories or you can say derivation of a equation for cables thank you